Portals are defined as being a doorway, gate, or other entrance. They aren't defined as being, well, this. They aren't defined as being a path that connects two places through space-time. So how would a portal like this work? And can you make one? Portals that we see on TV or in video games are tunnels through space-time which an object or character can travel through in order to end up in a different part of space-time. In physics, we call this type of portal a wormhole. A wormhole, also known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge, works like this. Imagine a sheet of paper that represents the fabric of space-time. On this piece of paper are two points or locations, one that we shall call Earth and one that we shall call Mars. Normally a trip from Earth to Mars using a spaceship would take about 7 months and would cover 100 million kilometers. But what a wormhole does is it folds up the fabric of space-time and creates a tunnel connecting two different points in space. So instead of having to travel millions of kilometers on the normal plane of space, you'd take a shortcut through a higher dimension. And then you could go to Mars and back while still having time to binge watch Netflix and pretend that you're studying for exams. And luckily, all we really need to open up a wormhole is some creative technology like this. The portal gun. It is capable of creating both ends of a wormhole with two simple shots. The shooter can then travel through one end of the wormhole and end up on the other side while conserving momentum. This is called a traversable wormhole, which allows travel in both directions from one part of the universe to another very quickly. But before you go and make your own portal gun, just know that it's not physically possible to create a wormhole in our positively charged, matter-filled universe. It would be too unstable and matter couldn't really travel through it. So we're gonna need something a little more negative. Negative energy is theoretical with opposite characteristics of normal energy. And it could be the key to holding a wormhole open long enough for humans to travel through. The trouble is that in order to open a wormhole the size of a grapefruit, it would require the amount of energy as the sun will produce in 100 million years. At the moment, our technology isn't capable of harnessing high amounts of energy, let alone high amounts of negative energy. But that's just it. Technology. We cannot create wormholes with our technology, but we do know something that can. All we have to do is look up at good old nature. It is theorized that wormholes may pop in and out of existence spontaneously throughout the universe in small pockets of negative energy density. The trouble is that these wormholes are small. Like, really small. A full-grown human is about 2 meters tall. An ant is about a centimeter long, or 2,000 times smaller than us humans. Bacteria? They're 2 micrometers long, or about a million times smaller than us. A hydrogen atom? 53 picometers, or 50 billion times smaller than us. Further down, much farther down, smaller than a proton, smaller than an electron, smaller than a quark, we get a Planck length, which is nearly 1 billion, 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 billion times smaller than a human. This is the size of the most common theorized type of wormhole. Clearly, these are too small for us to travel through, but what if we made them bigger? much bigger. Could we increase the size of a wormhole? Well, right now we can't, but we do know something that might have done so already. The Big Bang. The beginning of the infinite inflation of our universe. This rapid expansion has inflated the universe from the size of a Planck length to 91 billion light years across. If a wormhole were to have existed shortly after the Big Bang and were to be held open by a form of negative energy, then it is possible that we could have stable, giant wormholes floating around the vacuum of space right now. The movie Interstellar showed an example of what a wormhole like this would look like, which I also made a video about in the link below. Thank you very much for watching. Click here if you want to see the extended special edition podcast, which is on iTunes right now. You can also click here if you're awesome, and click here if you want to watch another science video. And I would like to ask you guys to rate my podcast on iTunes, because every single rating helps, and I don't think you guys know that how much it helps every single rating. But please do that and review it if you want to, and hopefully you guys will like it. But anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. If you want more information on sci-fi weapons, make sure to go check out Top 5 Quantum's video on sci-fi weapons. The link is in the description below and also in the annotation above.